Hi everyone and thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel Teaching in Tiaras. This is Jordan and I'm a third grade teacher here in the great state of Maryland. I am really excited to do a, well my first ever, 2016-2017 classroom reveal slash tour. I've never done one of these videos before so I'm basically just going to kind of sweep you around the room and explain some of the spaces in my room. Before we get started I have uh, just a couple details about my classes this year. I'm a reading and social studies teacher and I teach in a departmentalized third grade. My morning class, as I call them, has 29 students and my afternoon class has, what, 27? Which is up from last year, I had 23 and 18. So it's quite the jump for me this year. Uh, my classroom is jam-packed with all sorts of nifty stuff, so let's get started with the 2016-2017 classroom tour. Alrighty, so this is it. Um, as soon as you walk into my door, this is basically what you see. Uh, I am fortunate enough to have a lot of windows, so it is very naturally bright in here. So I'm just gonna kind of sweep around to each of the areas. I'm currently standing at my door right this second. So as soon as you walk in the door and you turn to the right hand side, you'll see the backpack area and just some storage stuff that I have up there on top of the shelves. Um, as we pan around, you'll start to see the front of the class classroom and the students desks. On the very opposite side you'll see all of those crazy big windows as well as the uh, really long bookshelf that we are fortunate enough to have. Going into the back corner you'll see my desk behind those uh, pom-poms, those three pom-poms hanging on the ceiling. This is the back wall and one of my favorite parts of my classroom is the homework area so I'll be sure to explain that in just a little bit. And then panning around you'll see um, some supplies, my computer which is currently <laughs> doing a weird thing. Um, videotaping and yeah so that is back to the front so I'm going to go around each of these areas and just explain a little bit about what I have going on here in this classroom Whoa! All right, so let's begin the tour in one of my favorite corners of the room. This is a bulletin board that you see when you walk straight into the room, and right now it is dedicated to spelling and other words that we've been learning in class. Uh, I have attended Jen Bangle's uh, webinars over the summer for interactive and differentiated spelling, and so I am going with her program in addition to Words Their Way this year. The students have, in both of my classes, have spelling partners based on what level they are at and throughout the week, the week they meet with these spelling partners uh, to go over their words and practice and do some activities and at the very end of the week they also give each other their individual tests. So I do not have any part in this except to give the mini lesson, review the mini lesson at the beginning of the week and throughout the week and then to grade the tests. Up there we have our rules that we just created today for actually giving tests. And um, this bulletin board will be full of words as soon as we kind of get it together here over the next couple weeks. We just finished the end of our second week, so that's kind of that's kind of where we're at right this second. Um, panning around, you'll start to see my smart board. Uh, the curtains up there I handmade for, with fabric from Walmart, and I really like them. I have three of them. So uh, you'll also see that something that I really, really love, and I tried it out last year, is an events calendar. It's basically just masking tape, and I put it up on the board. And it's really good for me and the kids because it keeps both of us kind of accountable for what stuff is coming up. And as you can see, I have a lot of Target stuff here too um, so you will definitely see a lot of those Target banners and all that stuff um, which I really love so yeah, moving on, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with my smart board. I, <laughs> I love it and I hate it. I love it because it's really, really awesome when it works, but I hate it because it's really awesome only when it works. I've been having a lot of issues with it lately, so I don't know, it's just, I don't know, I'm just having connectivity problems. Down under here are the um, supply bins for right this second. I needed to come up with a better way to collect supplies at the beginning of the year, especially because I have a departmentalized class. And so I basically have two sets of supplies all the time. And so what I just did was I just labeled each of these bins AM and PM supplies. And as they brought them in, you can see that some of them are still in the correct bins. And so we will start using those here in just a little bit but until then they have been super organized right down there and I don't see the need to move them at all so there's that wall 
and we're going to kind of shift on over here to the next part of my room. All right, so the next part of my room is kind of what I like to think of as my command center. I don't really think of my desk as my command center because I rarely even sit down at the desk. Um, but this is where I sit a lot of times. I do have a little stool that I sit in front of my little technology cart, as I call it. Um, my document camera is there. All of my plugs are behind there for the smart board. And that's where I will normally sit and grade papers or you know look at computer stuff or whatever. Uh, but the students on the board can see their schedule and um, their homework and also their essential questions for the day. And basically that's just what we're learning. Uh, over here to the final corner of the front wall is the reading focus wall. We're required to have a reading focus wall which basically tells the essential questions and the stories that we're reading and the skills and strategies that we're doing. Um, I also have a daily five rotations chart up there. I don't use it as uh, the sisters who wrote the book would normally you know like say to use the daily five but I do use them as rotations and so word work and work on writing and read to someone and read to self will be rotations that the students are able to do while I do guided reading. So that is a county requirement that we do guided reading and so I just use those as my centers if you will so that I don't have to kind of keep recreating the wheel uh, every single week. So swinging around here, this is uh, also one of my favorite areas of the classroom. It's my classroom library and on the blinds are actually pictures of the students and their families, which is kind of cool. Um, I just finally printed out library labels and the only, I missed one bin right there in the center. So strange, but um, we just finished talking about genre at school and so now uh, the book should hopefully make it back into the right spot and uh, in just a second we're going to swing around and talk about the other side of my room. So getting towards the other side of my room, you will finally see my desk and the guided reading area are very close. Uh, behind the guided reading table right here is all of our leveled readers and all of their portfolios and any supplies that I would need during guided reading time. Um, I have space for seven at my guided reading table plus me and um, I wish the table was a little bit bigger but I was unable to snag a uh, horseshoe table or anything like that. Back at my desk is not really anything special. Um, I don't really sit there a lot and so there's not really a lot on there that I need to get. Um, I have some supplies back there but normally my supplies are held in that cool little uh, supply holder thing that I made from Home Depot a couple years ago and it's worked really really well. Um, I do like the area to be nice and bright and so I've got all of my owls and all of these really colorful things to kind of spruce it up and make it look nice but again I don't really sit there too too often and um, I try to avoid my desk becoming a mess because if my desk becomes a mess then it kind of gives the students an excuse for their desk to become a mess too so we're gonna flip around to the back wall on the back wall, this is their mail center. On every Friday, they go ahead and get their uh, mail from their mailbox so they can take it home. It's just graded papers and stuff. And the back wall is pretty blank right this second. Uh, we decided that we were not gonna write class rules yet. Uh, we just haven't needed them, and I'm kind of looking to see what class rules that you know that the kids think that they need and what class rules that I think that they need. So going down to the desks, um, there are two name tags on each desk because we're departmentalized and um, the chair pockets that are now on top of the desks have been basically awesome. Um, last year we had them for the first time and the kids can just carry you know whatever they need to carry in them and each desk also has a supply bin just in case there's a student who doesn't have you know what they need I just want them everybody to be successful so moving along pew, pew, pew. Um, originally this was our word work center here as you can see it's kind of in disrepair I have not really put as much effort into uh, building it up this year yet uh, just because we're not really there um, but moving on to um, one of the other cool parts of the room, I finally created a homeworkopoly board, which I'm really excited about, and so are the kids. Um, so uh, I created this. Obviously, it's owl themed because I love owls, and uh, they've got their markers down there at the bottom, the clips, and each week on Monday, they play homeworkopoly with those foam dice right there. 
and they can land on all sorts of spots and it's only if they did their homework all week the previous week and if it was turned in on time so that's how that works on Monday morning during our morning routine that's when the kids get to play um, I told myself that I was not going to waste time during class actually playing this so I'm I've taught them how to play and I'm kind of trusting them to do it on their own during the morning routine so moving on to the Next part of the classroom is here in the corner and we're almost done. This is the um, basically the final thing that is really, really just something that has been awesome this year. Um, I did read Rafe Eskis' book, uh, There Are No Shortcuts, and I really liked that message, so I put it up on top of the homework turn-in center, and that's exactly what this is. This is a homework turn-in center. I went to a lot of webinars this summer, and one of them was by Create Abilities, Cassie from Create Abilities, and she gave me this idea. I don't know if it was hers or somebody else's, but this is how they turn in homework. Uh, each folder is Velcroed to the wall, and each folder has two paper clips on it, and all they have to do is literally just slide whatever papers they need to turn up turn in uh, onto the paper clips and then they stay there. Each of the students obviously has a number so that I can look back on this wall and literally see right away without rifling through any papers who has turned in their work and who hasn't. Not to mention the fact that when I used to have students turn work in in bins, um, it was out of alphabetical order and now using, you know, using these things that you know that are numbered I have the work already automatically in alphabetical order without without even having that much that much effort put into it so this has been a real huge lifesaver this year I really like it and both my AM and my PM class use it so moving on from the homework area that's just the sink area and all my paper and cleaning supplies uh, my class uses plickers and I love plickers and we just used them the other day and were very successful and um, that's a little chart for that uh, we run a colored clip system here at our school so you, you can see I can barely fit all of the clips on there it's kind of funny and then right here up at the front where my classroom door is is basically the extra supply bins um, this is stuff that I collect over the weeks that the students come in it's got post-its and pencils and glue and scissors and just extra stuff that the students might need I decided to put it in front of my closet door which is what this door is right here because I don't really use my closet that often and it basically keeps me from having to um, put things in my closet so <laughs> uh, it makes my closet in, in an inadvertent way uh, a little bit cleaner um, one of my favorite parts of the room is also the American flag I got this at a professional development uh, social studies professional development over the summer and it's actually a flag with 15 stars and 15 stripes uh, which was one of the early versions of the flag soon after the colonies were established and then they realized wow we can't put that many stripes on a flag um, so they reduced it to 13 and just added the stars after that so that is an overview of my room uh, it is pretty much finished. I don't really have any plans to add anything major. Um, my bulletin boards are, again, kind of bare just because we haven't really, I mean, we, we've learned some stuff, but we haven't really learned a lot of stuff. And so as the year goes on, those bulletin boards will get full and we will be showing our learning. Um, somebody commented um, to me who works here well where is all of your student work like where is that area and that area is reserved for the boards the bulletin boards that are outside of the classroom um, I don't have a lot of space like extra space in the classroom to showcase student work and so I dedicate the bulletin boards outside to that lovely cause so this is my classroom I hope you guys enjoyed um, the quick tour and um, if you have any questions feel free to just comment and I will see you guys another time. I hope you have a great year. I know I'm like crazy with the camera right now, but I hope you have a great year and um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you for joining me. Bye.